Good morning. I had to say that first. Good morning, everybody. I am Stacey Dales. I actually grew up right here in Ontario playing hoops. I could not be more proud to be with you here today. It's my distinct pleasure to welcome all of you in this room, to welcome sports fans from across the country, but more importantly, WNBA fans and the WNBA community from across the globe to celebrate what truly is an historic day in women's basketball. Please join me right now in acknowledging that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Today truly marks a special, special day for women's basketball. I've already said it. Right here in Canada, Toronto plays home to a multitude of professional teams who have made it to the top. Think about it. The Leafs, the Blue Jays, the Argos, TFC, the Raptors, they've all won titles. But guess what? We're not finished, guys. <laughs> Canada. Canada has a rich basketball history and an incredible passion for women's hoops. In recent years, the energy for the sport has truly reached unparalleled, unprecedented levels. We have a special group of leaders here, an esteemed group of leaders with us who are about to unveil a huge announcement, an announcement that we have all been waiting for. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, WNBA Commissioner Kathy Engelbert is here. <laughs> Chairman of Kilmer Sports Ventures, the Larry Tannenbaum. <laughs> I got goosebumps, guys. Premier Doug Ford, everybody. And we love her kicks on the end. That is Mayor Olivia Chow, folks. All right, so let's get this thing started first. Please join me in extending a huge, warm welcome to someone who truly believes in the power of bringing Canadians together through the magic of sport. More specifically, he has shown an unwavering support for girls and women in sport in this country. Folks, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Thank you so much, Stacey. What a great day today. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here with Mayor Chow, with Premier Ford, uh, with uh, our Canada's Minister of Sport, Carla Qualtro, my friend who's been working very, very hard on this, uh, Canadian Basketball Hall of Famer, Tammy Sutton-Brown, uh, and so many of you who worked tirelessly to make this exciting day a reality. Uh, WNBA Commissioner Kathy Engelbert, thank you so much, Kathy, for all your leadership for being here today. You're much taller than Gary Bettman. I'm, gonna, I, I'm really going to like working with you uh, significantly. Um, and, of course, uh, Larry Tannenbaum and Teresa Roach. Um, Larry, your personal drive to make this happen, uh, and, and we don't need to get into the details of it, uh, but uh, and I think everyone in this room knows uh, just how much uh, we are here today because uh, you uh, were absolutely focused on making it happen, and uh, really I don't think uh, uh, Toronto and indeed Canada can thank you enough for all your contributions to sport, but this one, uh, this one's even a Montrealer can get way behind, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's awesome, awesome, Larry. Because, yeah, as a Montrealer, it does pain me to say that Toronto is such an incredible sports city. Uh, through thick and thin, through heartbreak and triumph and heartbreak, Torontonians consistently demonstrate their passion, their commitment, and their love for professional sports. Toronto's also a diverse city, a welcoming city, and a progressive city. 
So it should come as no surprise that when it hosted the first ever WNBA game in Canada a year ago, it sold out and set records for attendance, broadcast viewership, and merchandise sales. And over the other way, in the PWHL's inaugural season this year, Toronto, along with Ottawa and Montreal, wholeheartedly embraced their new hockey teams. I had the pleasure to meet with the Toronto and Ottawa uh, hockey teams who told me how magical it was to play in front of huge crowds of dedicated fans, night in and night out. I have to say, sitting in that sold out crowd watching the PWHL with my kids, my daughter especially, made me so proud to be Canadian. Seeing the energy that's been built up around women's professional uh, sports, the hunger for it, the excitement for it, and just the glory of it is huge. Proud, proud to be part of a country that uplifts women in sport, whether it's Canadian soccer legend and my cousin Christine Sinclair, uh, or all the great players of the PWHL, uh, or all the incredible uh, basketball players we're celebrating today. Cities have, across Canada have said loudly and clearly, we are and we want to be a destination for women in sports. Pendant trop longtemps, les femmes n'avaient pas les ressources nécessaires pour rayonner dans le sport professionnel. Professional sports. They had to fight so that their professional sports be broadcast on television. Sports have been underreported, underfunded, and underappreciated. But that era is over. That era is over because people, and Canadians especially, want to watch the most talented women in the world compete at the highest level. The record-breaking crowds during the first ever PWHL season are proof of that, as is the unprecedented surge in interest in women's basketball thanks to incredible Canadian talents like Kia Nurse and Alia Edwards. But my friends, we know there's lots more work to be done. Here in Toronto, the people sitting with me are not shying away from the challenge. The women here are building the future of women's sports in Canada, and they use the long-term long love of Canadians for professional sports. quality in sport, and I, for one, could not be more excited to see it happen. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Thank you for all the incredible work we've done. Let's celebrate. Let's, let's see the success we're all building together. Go, women's sports, go. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, for those powerful words. Uh, it's my privilege right now to introduce you to, she's the boss, guys. She's the commissioner of the Women's National Basketball Association, whose visionary stewardship continues to pro propel the WNBA to unprecedented levels of success. I mentioned Mayor Chow's kicks, but take a look at these pumps, guys. <laughs> Folks, Kathy Engelbert, WNBA commissioner. Wow, um, it's just so great to be here. Um, thank you, Prime Minister. Uh, really appreciate those words around the rise of women's sports, particularly women's basketball. And it's great to be back in Toronto and such an honor to have you all here with us on such a historic day in the basketball community here in Canada. And as I look around the room, wow, I am so humbled to see what an impact the WNBA has had on this city and this country, and today is truly a special day. Um, Toronto and Canada hold a special place in my heart for the WNBA. We know the rich history of women's basketball here, from legends of the game like Stacy, Tammy Sutton Brown right there, to current stars like Kia Nurse, Bridget Carlton, and rookie stars, the Prime Minister mentioned, Aaliyah Edwards. We're so proud of the Canadians in our league, and there's so much excitement. I mean, the preseason game that the Prime Minister mentioned, and then this year we were in Edmonton, last year here in Toronto, the energy and passion we saw in arenas was amazing. Um, and we know Toronto is a basketball city. I know for all those hockey fans, we're in the middle of the Stanley Cup playoffs here, but um, we've seen time and time again that Toronto is home to dedicated and enthusiastic basketball fans. I'll never forget last year at Scotiabank Arena when um, I attended our Toronto game, and um, Lots of people coming up to me and saying, thank you for making my dreams come true by bringing a WNBA game here. That's when I knew 
this is the right place as we're thinking about expansion. So, and the tens of thousands and hopefully millions of girls who were inspired that day um, is just something that you cannot replicate without bringing a team here to Canada. So with that, I am honored to officially announce that we have awarded the City of Toronto the 14th WNBA franchise. <laughs> The team will start play in our 2026 season, and we're just at such a pivotal, pivotal moment for our league. Um, we have set viewership records, sell out, selling out season tickets, growing the game, and adding this 14th team marks a particularly significant milestone in the ongoing growth of the, of the league. So this has been a major goal of mine, certainly since I joined the league a few years ago. I'm here with um, my team who made this all possible. Um, and we know as we looked at the data around Toronto being a remarkably diverse city and vibrant city, and we're so proud that the WNBA is now part of this open and welcoming community. Um, and we're excited to expand outside the United States, and this is our first as well, uh, as we continue to work to bring in new audiences, new fans. Um, you know, it creates new opportunities for players. The, the depth of talent in this league is amazing. And so to be able to offer a deeper pool of talent with a team here in Canada as well is great. So by the way, in case you haven't been following the WNBA, our players are not just the best basketball players in the world. They also serve as role models, community ambassadors, symbols of empowerment. And we can't wait to see how they activate and become fixtures here in the Toronto community around the impact that they will make. Um, so, as the longest tenured women's professional sports league in North America, we just tipped off our 28th season last week. Um, we just, the momentum we have built, um, the leadership we're showing, last year was our most watched season in 21 years, and again, we're just tipping off year 28. We had the highest viewership in history of the WNBA draft this year, blowing away prior records. So now the city of Toronto will join us. Um, this is all possible because of Larry Tannenbaum and Kilmer Sports Ventures. They have been determined partners committed to bringing a WNBA franchise here to Canada. We've been in conversations with Larry for a while uh, and it became clear that he and his team have the experience, the infrastructure, the expertise. Uh, this is a visionary ownership group and to Larry and Judy, there is no one we would rather partner with to take the W's first step on our journey to become a more global league. We are so proud to make history with you. Congratulations, and Toronto, welcome to the W. <laughs> So Larry, if you would come up, we'd like to present you with our iconic ball, May 23rd, 2024, Toronto, welcome to the W. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks, man. And to the entire WNBA executive team who are here today, uh, thank you very much for all your, your support. Kathy, under your leadership, the WNBA has experienced unprecedented growth, including the league's first global expansion. I know this is just the start of what's to come and we're honored to have been selected as the first franchise outside of the United States. This is an incredibly important occasion and a historic one. I'm thrilled so many of you are here to celebrate this game, change, this game-changing day for not only women's basketball, but for sports in Canada. Thank you, Prime Minister Trudeau and Minister Coltreau over there, thank you. Uh, Premier Ford, and Minister Lumsden, 
uh, and Mayor Chow and Deputy Mayor Malik. This team is Canada's team, and we appreciate you all being here to celebrate with us today. Just over 30 years ago, I saw an opportunity to bring the NBA to Canada. We, as a city and as a country, were ready to welcome Canada's first NBA franchise to Toronto. It was the right time, in the right place, and I jumped on the chance. I went on the road and convinced each and every owner in the league to support an expansion team for Toronto. It was no small feat, and in 1993, at the NBA All-Star Game in Utah, we got our team. Since that time, I've spent a good part of my career helping to build championship caliber sports franchises in our great city of Toronto. While some years are better than others, we've been lucky enough to celebrate league victories six times in this city, most memorably with the Raptors five years ago. Seeing the pride of our teams bring not only to Toronto sports fans, but to fans across the country is remarkable. More importantly though, I've seen how our teams inspire future generations to play and grow into a better version of themselves through the skills and discipline learned through sport. I've referenced Nelson Mandela's famous quote many times. Sport has the power to change the world. It has the power to inspire. It has the power to unite people in a way that little else does. It speaks to youth in a language they understand. Sport can create hope where once there was only despair. It is more powerful than government in breaking down racial barriers. It's this that drives my passion and commitment to sports in this country and this city. It's the legacy I want to leave for our next generation. For years, young girls in basketball have been inspired by some of the NBA greats. Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, DeMar DeRozan, Kyle Lowry, who is with us here today. Thank you, Kyle. Jamal Murray and SGA. But these young women never saw someone like themselves on the brightest stage playing the sport they love. Now, the WNBA has changed all that. And today, we're changing that here in Canada. Our team will complete the pathway for women in this country. They will see heroes that look like them in person and on the air all summer long. They'll gain inspiration from Asia Wilson, Diana Taurasi, Brianna Stewart, and Kia Nurse. They can see that the sport they play as girls and as women is just as important and worth investing in. Because the more we all recognize value and potential of women's sports, the closer we get to a more equitable future in the world of sports. So today, we're here because once again, we were in the right place at the right time. And that's entirely because of the talent, hard work, and perseverance of many women in this room today. Thank you. Many say women's sports is having a moment. I disagree. Women's sports has arrived. It is a movement. The world is finally taking notice of something that's been there all along. Immense talent, passion, and competition. And that's why we're here today at the right time, in the right place, for our first WNBA team in Canada. I want to say a few words about our franchise. It's early days and we have a lot of work ahead of us, but there are a few key priorities guiding our work. First and foremost, this franchise will be Canada's team. While our home base will be here, right here, Coca-Cola Coliseum, an exhibition place in Toronto, we will play games in Vancouver and Montreal throughout the season, uniting the country behind our franchise and inspiring pride and passion in fans from coast to coast. We will always be committed to providing a world-class player and personnel experience for all who represent our city and country through this team. 
We know that investing in our players is paramount to their success on and off the court. This means an investment in expert staff, state-of-the-art facilities, and creating an unmatched home court advantage that raises the bar for every franchise in the league. It also means welcoming them to Canada and making it feel like home. One more priority worth mentioning today, it's important for us to invest in communities across the country because success is not just about the players and the team, but it's also about ensuring a purpose-led legacy. Our players will serve as inspirational role models, both on and off the court and we will be committed to making a positive impact in our communities across the country. I've talked a lot today about the historic opportunity ahead of us, and I'd like to take a moment to thank a small group of people without whom this would never have been possible. Ivan Gazidis, president of Kilmer Sports Ventures, Teresa Resch, who will be taking on the role of team president. Patrick Lee, who will be our CFO of the new team, uh, and the executives in our Kilmer office, led by Stephen Bloom and Craig Manuel. You have all been instrumental in getting us to this point. Thank you to Dale Lastman and the team at Goodman's, Keith Pelly and Nick Eaves at MLSE, the CNE Exhibition Place and U of T, who have all been incredible partners. As well, Group CH in Montreal, who will play a key role introducing our WNBA team to Quebec. Lastly, I want to thank the people of Canada. None of this would be possible without your support, and I look forward to packing arenas across the country. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Tannenbaum, for those words. And I also just want to say, Judy, thank you as well um, for making the dreams of millions of people across this country come true and remarkable. Right now, we are going to bring to the stage a huge sports fan. He is our premier, Doug Ford. Come on up, Doug. Thank you so much, Stacey. It's great to be here. And Boy, all I have to say is, wow, what a speech. What a speech. You have a bright future in politics. We've got to watch it, Justin. <laughs> we'll, we'll run them in the next election for, for sure. But what, what an honor to be here. I'll, I'll tell you, I've brought along my great minister of sport, tourism, and, and culture. Uh, we call him Lumsey, an old CFLer. But I know he's a big supporter of all sports. And you're doing an incredible job promoting sport around the, the province. So thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, Larry, Judy, uh, thank you. Thank you for everything you've done for not just Toronto, but Ontario. No matter if it's being a leader in the sports scene, blazing a new trail today once, once again for uh, numerous uh, other things, not to mention the Raptors and every other sports uh, team that you're involved in. And uh, just, just being an icon, a business leader, a philanthropist, a giving back. What, what people don't know a lot of people, the average person doesn't know about the Tannenbaums, they give back non-stop to every organization uh, there is. And they aren't out there waving the flag, they just do it, so thank you. And, and I see Ken over there and the, the entire family, your entire team, thank you for uh, working so hard for our community. This is going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting. I have an opportunity as Premier to travel around this great province and visit so many high schools, so many colleges and universities. And I'll tell you, I said uh, this is trailblazing. Absolutely it is. This is going to give an opportunity to young women. Just imagine this. We already have great Canadian stars in the, the WNBA, but just imagine a, a young woman going to high school here somewhere in, in Toronto, preferably Etobicoke, because that's where the greatest place in the world to live is, in Etobicoke North up in Rexdale. But just to my, see, I got one Etobicoke person in there. God bless you, thank you. Um, but, you know, just imagine this. Growing up 
here in Toronto and then playing for, for the Toronto team. It's uh, what a dream that would be. And, you know, Commissioner, thank you for everything you're doing. Uh, you've brought this to a whole different level. And I was telling the Commissioner about the diversity of our, of our province, 110 nationalities, think of that, over 200 languages being spoken. And this is gonna be truly not just a Toronto team, as Larry, you were saying, it's gonna be the Canadian team. And Commissioner, you just had to see five years ago, which I'm sure you did, uh, the parade of two million people coming down our street when the Raptors won, and we look forward to doing it again, another two million people when our great Toronto team uh, wins. We have a team of champions here in Ontario. And I always say about on Ontario, you know, I had an opportunity to spend a, a lot of time, 20 years in Chicago, in our plant there, in New Jersey, and but Ontario, you always talk about six degrees of separation, right? You can pretty well find anyone. In Ontario, it's one degree of separation. Everyone knows everyone. It's a massive family of 16 million people growing rapidly, the fastest growing region in North America, bar none, faster than Texas and Florida combined. And within that growth, there's gonna be amazing athletes, amazing basketball stars. And I just wanna wish you all the best and God bless the people of Ontario. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. One degree of separation, could not agree more, Premier Ford. Now we are going to call upon the leader of, you guys know, it's Canada's largest city, the same city which has played host to the first ever WNBA game in Canada. It was sold out, so was Edmonton, by the way. Mayor Olivia Chow, she played a little hoops in her day, guys. Come on out. Well, what an exciting day for Toronto, yeah. I'm here, uh, joined with me, the local councillor and deputy mayor, Osman Malik, and our all-star city manager who coaches in referee basketball, Paul Johnson. Yeah, be here. Yes, it's an exciting day for professional women's sports in our city. It's time. Yeah, it's time for women basketball heroes. It's time for a women basketball team. The new WNBA team will have the power to bring people together at the stadium, in people's living rooms, restaurants, and bars. It will give people another reason to cheer for Toronto, both pride and passion for our city. The team will inspire generations of young people. They will have new heroes, new role models, new local legends, and new memories of favorite plays, right? Sports memories last a lifetime. Everyone remembers their first baseball game, basketball game, or where they were during the Raptors game seven when Cowie hit that buzzer beater. I remember where I was. And you know, I came to Canada when I was 13. Lonely kid, only kid with my parents, didn't know anybody, landed at Jarvis Collegiate, didn't know anyone, Just spoke a bit of English. I tried out for the basketball team, <laughs> and I got in. <laughs> That's where I made friendship. That's where I found my sense of belonging. That's where I got my confidence. Now I grew shorter as everybody grew taller. I didn't try out for a grade 10. But you know this WNBA team, those sports hero is gonna mean a whole lot to a whole lot of teenage kids, especially ones that are feeling not so sure, you know, when you're growing up. Wow, that is the power of sports. Sports have the unique power to draw us together, to unite us, to blur divisions and build bridges across all the different communities that call Toronto home. All united in the common love of our city, our province, and our country. 
Yes, this is an historic moment in Toronto sports. I know that it wouldn't have been possible without the Canadian women's athletes. Their hard work, their dedication. They have already proven what we already knew, that they can compete in the world stage. And of course, thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr. Premier. Kathy, thank you, and most especially, the most tenacious, ambitious, passionate hero, Larry Tannenbaum. Thank you so much. I speak for the, Kathy, uh, the entire city when I say we're excited to watch the new team compete. And I work with city council to make sure that we are ready for another huge championship parade. Uh, I have the honor today to, um, I don't, you don't need me to read out the entire proclamation. They just say that we're really proud and that uh, we are, I, the mayor of Toronto, on behalf of Toronto City Council, do hereby proclaim May 23rd, 2024 as WNBA Day in the city of Toronto. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Mayor Chow. WNBA Day, ladies and gentlemen. History.